is good, Greg Gang. We're actually here today. I know, it's, it's just me. Nobody else, just me. I know, I know, I'm sorry. But we're going to be doing a pretty awesome video. Now, I'm thinking about doing, let's do a primitive weapons challenge. But, Kendall, dude, what's the challenge? Well, um, uh, b build primitive weapons. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Now, as I was thinking about this challenge, I was like, okay, well, with primitive weapons, that's kind of like, uh, that's a lot of weapons. There's a large range of variety. So I was thinking, first things first, let's start it off small. Let's go with some basic weapons first. And I'm talking like very basic. Primitive weapon number one. Rock. I hit the chain on one of them. Now, since our first weapon is going to be the rock, I would dive into the history of, you know, the use of rocks in weaponry. It was first used around the beginning of time. Yeah, it's a rock. You throw it at people, you hit stuff with it. Yeah, I think that's about it. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Rock. That's how you do it, son. Now, if I had to give the rock a rating, I would say it's better than a small stick. Besides that, a rock would not be my weapon of choice. Unless you get a big rock. And then, I'm not strong enough to hold it. On to the next weapon! Apache Attack Helicopter! I'm just kidding, guys. That's not a primitive weapon. That is a normal weapon, though! Why is there an Apache flying through my neighborhood? Oh my god! If they don't slow it down, I'm about to throw rocks at them, okay? As soon as I turn off the camera, they start shooting. What are they shooting at? Can they not clear? Clearly see I'm over here. <sighs> Why do they keep following me? They got a stinking minigun sticking out the side of it. Why are they trying to kill me? When will you learn that your actions have consequences? On to the next weapon. It's kind of hard to make a video with an Apache attack helicopter trying to take cheap shots at you. Like, come on, give me a break. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I actually know those guys. I'm kidding again, I don't know. But anyways, it is time, guys. We're going on to the second weapon. But the second weapon kind of requires, like, you know, something to cut it. Because it is made out of wood. As many, like, many, many primitive weapons were made out of wood. Because that's just what's available. But before we get into the wood, I think I should show you about the Gen 2 KG pocket knife that is now restocked. Yes, that's right. Probably literally the number one item that I've ever sold in my life. The KG pocket knife, and now we just made it even better. And here it is. Look at that beauty. And the knife's pretty cool too. But anyways, here we go. The KG pocket knife, same size, same blade, same everything, same size, same everything. The only difference with the Gen 2 is instead we're going with a plain, you just plain orange blaze orange we actually traded it in for a kg orange camo now if you don't know about the kg camo i really kind of don't think i've told many people about it but the kg camo is literally kg camo i mean it's my own camo pattern that we created here this spring but we're just now starting to release products with it so you can see some of the watermarked kgs if you look real close there's one um, there's another KG, I think, right there. We sold out of these boogers super fast. But I'm happy to tell you, kindlegrade1.com slash shop, they are back in stock. Pick yours up now before they run out again. And if you never really knew much about the KG pocket knife, then you probably didn't know it could do this. Or this. Now you know. It also doubles as a tremendous... Ow! Well, that's not how you throw a knife. But it also doubles as a pretty good throwing knife. See? Told you. But if I told you that this was the only KG knife on the website right now, I'd be lying to you. Because we have three more. We'll start off with something slower. We have the KG hunting knife. Now this in here, this one's pretty sweet. I love this knife. You talking about a hunting knife, a survival knife? This is it, guys. But it comes with its own sheath. It's a fixed blade, so you can't fold it up. That's why it has the sheath. But oh my lanta, that is a big knife, a big hunk of knife. It comes with a gut hook, cause you know, it's primarily a hunting knife. It's great for deer. I'm gonna be skinning a deer with this this fall, if I kill one, hopefully two. But that's beside the point. What I was talking about, survival knife, why it's perfect, 100% basically still construction except for the handle. The handle isn't screwed in with a little screw to the blade. The handle is the blade. One solid piece of steel running from the tip of the blade all the way down to the very back of the handle. And then it just has these handles right here, these little grips, just to, you know, give you something to hold on to. It also is sporting the KG camo. That's like our little, I don't know, kind of our green woodland top. It's just something different. All of the different knives have a different KG camo color. This is one of those that if you accidentally drop it, you better be moving your feet because your toe very may well come off. Now there's two more. This one 
This one's a little more technique so specific. You can probably already tell by the sheath. It is also a fixed blade. It is a fillet knife. Now, this one is a pretty solid fillet knife. Pull it out here. The KG logo is actually on this side. This is a fillet knife, you know, fish filleting fish, whatever you need to do. Also, not gonna up. Oh, you may have just seen the fourth item. But anyways, not gonna lie guys, been using this on watermelons for a pretty good while now. It is an excellent fruit knife as well. Cuts maters up like a dream. Has this handle right here. That way it gives it more grip, a little hexagonal pattern. It's got a nice flex to it too. Let me just try to do that without cutting the seat. It's got a nice flex to it, so it's exactly what you want in a good fillet knife. We'll be using this knife hopefully pretty soon. Probably not today because this isn't really made to cut wood at all. It's made to literally cut meat and fish and fillet stuff. Now we're moving on to the one we will 100% be using a ton today. Again, this one's got KG camo handle. It is a hatchet slash tomahawk. But it is a mean looking machine. And I should probably be careful trying to get it out of the sheath one handed. It does come with a sheath as you can tell. But here is that little son of a gun. I think I've actually teased this once or twice and I cut something down. I'm not sure if I did or not. But here it is. Not too heavy, not too light. I kind of done that, kind of scared myself, but it, I done it, so I'm fine. Now, we're starting up front, massive. I'm not lying to you whenever I say this is the sharpest hatchet I've ever seen in my life. This is not the hatchet that you go to a tree and chop six times. This is the hatchet that you go to a tree and chop once, and it cuts it like butter. It is mean. It's literally mean. Then you have this, this hook. You got a hook in the back? Forget the horses, we got a hook. It's pretty lightweight construction though, so it's not like it's not like gonna weigh you down if you like put it back in your backpack, strap it in. It's got the sheath, so it's not gonna cut everything. Perfect. I'm gonna do a little demonstration for you right now, just to show you the real power of the dock side. I mean the hatchet. Alright, so you got this tree, right? Pretty solid, not too thick, not too thin. Well, now it's gone. How do you like me now? This thing is a sapling's worst nightmare. By the way, that tree did need moved, so I'm not just killing trees. It's also got all these holes in it, so you could definitely paracord some stuff in there easy and just hang it on your backpack or your side. But there we go. KG Cutlery. Don't really know what it's called yet. KG Knives. Something like that. The brand for knives is moving up quickly. Just one more time running through the most popular KG Pocket Knife extremely awesome knife. I love this thing. They're back in stock. The Gen 2, that is. If you got the Gen 1, congrats. Probably won't be any more of those made. Then you got this over here, the KG Hunting Knife. That's in stock with the gut hook. Then we have the Filet Knife. If you fish a lot, that's what you want. Then, of course, KG Hatchet. I feel like everyone needs one of these, whether they plan to use it or not. This is just a cool thing to have. Look at the hook. That is awesome. But anyways, guys, on to the next primitive weapon. And we're actually going to take this out to use it. We're actually going to use the hatchet to make it. All right, we're going for a staff. Staff is a super simple, literally extremely simple item. It's just a straight stick that you can whack stuff with. It's pretty simple, but we're going to have to find a decently thin, straight, straight, straight piece of, you know, wood. And if you're wondering about my merch and stuff, it's kinogray1.com slash shop or the first link in the description. There's also a ton more than just what I showed you today. So if you're going on there, maybe you want to buy a hatchet, maybe you want to buy a pocket knife, browse around, maybe get you a t-shirt too while you're at it. Because each thing you buy really does support us and help us coming out here, you know, making videos, and running into spider webs like I did that one right there that you can't see on camera. Um, that one looks okay. It looks dead though. I'll take a hard pass on that. I believe we'll go with this one right here. That one looks good enough. I'll just set you right here and you can watch me cut it down. First, I'll start up top. Grab the hook, pull it down. You don't come down here on the bottom. Should make a quick work of it. There we go. Not a beautiful staff, but a good staff. New KG Hatchet sure made quick work of it. We'll set the modern weapon down. And now we got a primitive weapon. Let's go use this staff on a local tree or something. Now, if you're going to try to ask me who in the world invented the staff, I would say Jesus. Well, kind of Jesus, but you get the point. Ow! Whoa! Sight's done, boys. Sight done. Man, that's a lot of cardio, dude. I can't handle that. I'm out of shape. It's 
called craftsmanship. They ain't famous. Okay, guys, I just got it done. This is, um, uh, this is different. I don't think it's really different, but I think it's different. So, you know, you got your standard club handle, thins down, and then we have a bow. Now, I don't know how good you guys can see that, but, uh, it's a spiked bow. Now, I'm sure I could probably, uh, rough this up the back end where it could be like a hammer, but I really didn't. I mainly just wanted it to be like one single spike in the front. So, Kendall, what's that weapon called? I don't know. I just came up with it. I mean, I'm about positive that people use something like this. I mean, why would they not, you know? I think my tripod's broken. Definitely broken. So, I mean, probably for close range, of course, since you only got like a foot distance on it. Uh-oh. Gotta be careful there. Pop the tires. <laughs> but also, you know, let's say they're out there bow hunting. They shoot something and it's like, kind of like it's wounded, but then it's not completely dead. Going with a bang, it's dead now. You feel me? I did end up using this string right here. I'm sure they probably didn't have paracord back then, but I'm sure they could find some kind of fibrous plant to take its spot. I think I'll show you one more good one, though. And this one's really good, and you guys can probably actually use it in everyday life. Well, not really everyday life, but you could actually use it one day whenever you need it. I've used it before on this channel and actually used it. Again, what we're going to need for this, a pretty straight staff kind of looking stick, but not nearly as thick as that one. Pretty thin, actually. Okay guys, here we are right here in the middle of a field, literally the middle of nowhere, but we got some cane pole. The reason I wanted to come get a cane pole, what we're doing, we're building a spear slash a gig, but we came over here to get a little cane pole. This is my preferred choice because it's lightweight. Unless you're tackling something like a squirrel, this is going to be good enough for like frogs, small fish, I don't know, uh, maybe a mouse. Nothing too big. But if you're trying gig or something like spear, a bigger game, it's simple. Just get a bigger, thicker stick. Now, I decided to come out here and use the uh, hunting knife because it uh, hasn't really got much attention today but uh yeah i'm just gonna come in here to cut it instead of just chopping it i like to go in come on in come on in and then got it one more time one more time got it there you go just like that super clean cut guys all i was doing was pushing up against it and kind of just scraping and it just dug in dug in dug in a little bit more each and every time but this right here this is the stick this should be all we need we'll head on back to the house and i'll get it going okay so i ended up scrapping that last cane pole because on the way down here it kind of fell apart i don't know guys i guess it's too green usually green green poles aren't bad but maybe this time of the year they are which is midsummer so i went and found a dead one that used to be a cane pole i mean it's still a cane pole but it used to have a fishing line on it and then i just cut it off now the first thing i'm gonna want to do is probably make this all about, you know, flat kind of. So I'm just going to take my knife, whittle it around here. Shouldn't be too hard. I mean, KG pocket knives, sharper than diamonds. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to baton this thing. What that means is like, you know, sticking my knife right here, I'm going to half this thing, and then I'm going to do it again and half it to where there's four sticks made coming out of this one. Ready? Very lightly. I do not want to go too much. That's good. Now we'll come across, do the same thing the other way which is right here, what is... And that right there is good. That's all we want to do for now. You don't want to split it too much, especially the cane pole, because these are kind of brittle. But now what we're going to do is the fun part. We need to find very, very, very small twigs. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take the teeny tiny stick and wedge it in between the splits of the sticks. That way they actually, you know, pooch out a little bit. See what it's going to do? Put the stick in and you pull it down spreads those out here we go now we got it about done i went and actually got some bigger sticks to stick in between here so it can spread it more but look at that guys that's looking nice now i actually used it about a couple months ago and i done this right here and i actually didn't sharpen them because i was actually fishing for salamanders I'd poke them, they'd get caught in here i pull them up and then i actually moved them over to a pool pond that i had for a little while and so in that case i didn't want to sharpen them however let's say you're going after frogs or maybe fish, bluegill, you can sharpen these prongs. And you can even put barbs on them to where once you hook something, it ain't coming off. Now I'll go ahead and I'll sharpen them up for you right here. Just using the pocket knife because that's all you need. You don't really need a hatchet to sharpen a stick. 
There we go. It is sharp. Like that can actually do damage. If you had a frog or just a fish, like I'm saying fish is a really good idea. If you can get in a creek to where you can stand over it, look down in it, pull this thing up, maybe got a little rainbow trout where because they swim in the little creeks and stuff. Get him just like that. That is what you call some primitive weapons. Now, uh, like I said, we didn't go over all of them, but we definitely went over quite a few of them, which is really cool. If you want to pick up any of the knives you've seen today, whether it be the hunting knife, the hatchet, the pocket knife, or the fillet knife, you already know it's kindlegrade1.com slash shop or the first link in the description. Also, you can pick up other kinds of merch like this camo and orange shirt. I really like this shirt, it's definitely one of my favorites. And if you know the name of whatever this is, probably just a pointed club. Maybe it's named something different, I don't know. Just leave it in the comments, because I have no idea what this is. If you don't know what this is called, go ahead and give it a name, because you know just as much as I do. But anyways, guys, I'll tell you what. I'll see you later. Whoop. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment. If you want some sweet merch, go to kendallgray1.com shop, hashtag Jesus, hashtag Greg